The head and executive producer of the Like a Dragon Games has given a lengthy response to concerns over a recent article from the Japan Times about the localization process at Sega and Bandai Namco. Two days ago, he made a total of 10 posts about the matter. The posts are in Japanese, and the channel reached out to Tom Nip Schultz for a quick but accurate translation of his posts. Tom is a former localization producer at Exceed Games, and you may also remember how he helped the channel translate scenes from Persona 5 in a previous video. There is quite a lot to go through, and so jumping straight in. First are the six posts which were made as part of a thread regarding the localization. It seems that some of this story has been misrepresented. And so let me be clear, the localization does not make any changes to the original Japanese content. We have checks done for unintentional derogatory terms, discriminatory expressions, potential religious issues, etc, and then correct them in the original script. So any changes made apply to both the Japanese and the overseas versions alike. I get responses that say this is bad localization, but never once have I received any direct request to change any content. Just observation that say a character's name is similar to some form of local derogatory slang, or there's a mark that closely resembles that of an actual organization, etc. Also the localizers are Sega, they're on our side, they're part of the team. If we can't trust their judgment, how are we even supposed to make a game at all? LOL. Besides which, the Japanese ethics checks are 100 times stricter, believe me. LOL. Now some have made the claim that the original intent was altered due to foreign influence. But the thing is, we ourselves are constantly changing from the many influences around us in our daily lives. We're not consciously altering anything because of external influence, but just acting and creating as we ourselves see fit. And finally, RGG Studio in Japan has planners and designers whose native languages are English and Chinese, and they conduct thorough playtests in those languages. So if anything has been altered, they'll notice immediately. There's really no way any weird changes could slip through the cracks without us catching them, lol. Bottom line, I have faith in my friends at Sega. Oh yeah, and about the whole skirt length thing mentioned in the article. Staff, isn't this a little short? Me, yeah, I guess it kinda is. It's realistic, but it does look like she'd be cold in that. And the fashion's a bit outdated, so maybe it's worth changing. That's the kind of exchange we're talking about, followed by me requesting MB to look into it. It's a team member giving a suggestion, and the rest of us taking that suggestion under consideration. Nothing out of the ordinary there. One more thing since I'm on lunch break. I talked about this with Akio Otsuka during the Roostar long form stream for Roo Yakuza 3, but the school backpacks that the Asaga o children wear used to all be strictly black for boys and red for girls, but nowadays that's no longer the case. The rule changed, as it always does, and we need to accept those changes. Things aren't always gonna stay the same. And then there's this post, regarding localization too. We do change some things around like proverbs, Japanese folktales and historical accounts, like a Dragon 8 chapter titles, etc. Stuff where directly translating wouldn't adequately communicate the intended meaning in the target language due to vastly different cultural experiences and knowledge. The Like a Dragon team is so detail oriented and fastidious though, that we'd never even consider anything that might change a character's nature or personality in any way. And then next was this post, regarding localization last. From the get-go, we actively avoid using any proper nouns or expressions that might potentially offend our audience anyway. And in localization, we change any phrases or expressions that simply wouldn't make sense when translated literally to something equivalent in the target language's cultural sphere, and check it in Japan too, of course. This is how we've done things since Yakuza 0. Basically, the end goal is to properly and accurately convey the Lacquer Dragon experience to a foreign audience. That's what the localization team strives for. And then there was this post. But translation is seriously difficult. The interview that started this whole discussion was itself translated from Japanese. Evidently, just interpreting what I say at the company is a real bear of a task, since I just keep prattling on all the time and use all manner of turns of phrase. Sorry for all the trouble. Thank you for always having my back, Birch team. And then finally, there was this post. By the way, it's worth mentioning that Kasuga Ichiban is a character who doesn't have any biases age, social status, prestige, sex, 
None of it matters to him, but that wasn't done as any sort of capitulation to some agenda or whatnot. That's just the kind of character we wanted to make. Uh, actually, I guess he does have a hell of a lot of biases when it comes to marriage, lol. Anyway, you can find all of that out for yourself firsthand by playing Like a Dragon 8, shameless plug. And so there you have an accurate English version of how the Like a Dragon head has responded, and it's gone into quite a bit of detail and spoken about a number of different things. A big thanks to Tom again for the help translating, and as always, let us know your thoughts in the comments below, and until next time, thank you for watching.